I just bought this home-built experimental airplane and now I need to fly it across the country with a total stranger. It's either the smartest or the dumbest thing I've ever done. So wish me luck. I'm Rob, I live in California, and this all started when I found an airplane and fell in love. It's got a sick panel, a badass paint job, and it's fast, baby. But it's on the opposite side of the country and all the good airplanes I've found have sold in just hours. I'm not gonna let this one slip through my fingers, so I buy it sight unseen and wire the seller a bunch of money. Monday, I take a one-way flight to Raleigh, North Carolina. Tuesday, I Uber to the middle of nowhere, Kenley, North Carolina. So I'm here at the airport just waiting on the aircraft owner to arrive. And it's just beautiful here. Tom, the seller shows up to show me the plane and wow, it's even better than in photos. I hop in with Tom for a test flight and she climbs like a homesick angel. A total dream to fly, responsive, agile, and fast. Tom makes a carrier approach and lands that thing softer than a butterfly with sore feet. Before I fly this home-built airplane across the country, I wanna know the thing's not gonna fall apart because if I die in a plane crash, my mom's gonna kill me. Honestly, I have no clue what I'm looking for, but George and Becky do. They're inspectors that have built a bunch of this type of aircraft. They give me their greatest blessing by saying they would fly in it. So I shake Tom's hand and the bird is mine. So there she is. I just bought this aircraft right here. And to say I was a little bit unprepared for this journey is a bit of an understatement. Before we jump into it, a massive thank you to our sponsor, Miles Board. They make the best electric skateboards in the business, the Phantom and the Sex Panther electric skateboards. They will go up to 30 miles per hour, up to 30 or 40 miles per charge, depending on the model. And you can throw them in the back of your car or the back of your airplane. Plus, if you're watching this video and you use the call sign of this airplane, N2EP, November 2, Echo Papa, when you check out, you're gonna save 100 bucks off any board. So go to milesboard.com, code N2EP at checkout, you'll save 100 bucks off the best electric skateboards in the business. Wednesday, I need five hours training with an instructor to activate my insurance. So I fly as slow as possible to save gas and rack up the hours. From the air, we check out first flight. This is where the Wright brothers flew their very first airplane for the first time in human history. That was pretty cool. Five hours are done, but the day's getting late and the clouds are closing in. Normally, I would never fly under these conditions. It's marginal VFR weather, heavy, heavy winds, and I'm in a new aircraft that I'm still getting familiar with. But I've got a serious case of get there itis because just 200 miles away in Columbia, South Carolina, there's a stranger waiting for me. A stranger by the name of Cameron Rast. Three years ago, I was on Facebook and I saw Cameron pop up with the same last name as me and a picture of a plane in his profile. We sent a couple messages to each other and left it at that. Well, now he's agreed to hop in this experimental airplane and fly it back to San Diego with me. He already took five days off work and was expecting me yesterday. I don't wanna make him wait any longer and risk getting stuck by this weather for the entire week. So I strap in and blast off. Now pilots, you know this decision is questionable and so do I. I'm thinking there's a string of alternate airports along my path, worst case I can land at one of those or fall back on my instrument rating. Well, here's an abbreviated list of everything that goes wrong on the first solo in my new plane. Before taking off, I've got the destination airport programmed in the GPS. But as soon as I hit autopilot, I realize the direction it's pointing me in is the wrong direction. I should be going south, but this thing is pointing me north. I mess around in the cockpit, trying to figure out what's going on, check the compass heading, pull out for flight on my phone, and get a real heading to fly on the compass. About 10 minutes later, the GPS course flips over and starts pointing in the right direction. That was pretty spooky. Now I'm on course cruising between two cloud layers, and I learned firsthand what the pretty colored spots on the radar mean. Rain, and lots of it. It's pouring down on the plane and me because apparently the canopy seal in this airplane could use a little TLC. If it's leaking on me, it can also be leaking on critical electronics, so I do my best to get around it. Final breath of daylight slips away and the black of night swallows us. Closer I get to Columbia, the lower the clouds get. I go from 6,500 to 5,000 to 3,000 to 2,800. Before I know it, I'm at 2,200 feet and barely clear of the clouds above me. There's mist everywhere and forward visibility shrinks by the minute. I'm just hanging on to the few house lights below for visual reference. If it wasn't for my terminal case of get there-itis, I'd have landed this plane already at an alternate airport. 
Instead, I grit my teeth, punch the throttle, and push forward. I monitor weather reports to make sure I have a place to land just in case my course closes in completely. 30 miles out, I get wet again, trying to get around a big storm. And right after, it clears up and I see the lights of downtown Columbia. I breathe a sweet sigh of relief, but not for long. The air traffic controller asks if I have the airport in sight. I don't see it anywhere. He asks again and again, and I still don't see it. Finally, I see the faint lights of the runway and they're 2,000 feet directly below me. I fly right over this thing. So I go around for another attempt, but with a strong crosswind, I'm way too high and way too close again. I start trying to slip it to get in before thinking, I've already pushed my luck enough for the night. So I go around again, and on the third try, I finally get it down. I couldn't be happier to be on land again. There's a black Jeep waiting for me on the taxiway, and inside is Mr. Cameron Rast. First stop here. Mr. Cameron Rast. Hey, 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 hey. Cameron, what air, airport is this? So we're, you're down over at Columbia, uh, like KCUB is the name of it. So Jim Hamilton's uh, airport, downtown Columbia. So I told them Columbia and the, and the guy on approach was like, do you want runway 21 or, or nine? <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm like, I don't remember no 21 and nine on nope. the map. Nope. <laughs> I had to check it. I'm like, I'm seeing 13 and 31. He's like, yeah. oh, you want Hamilton. Yep. That's uh -oh. it. It's small, man. It's tiny. I'm glad you made it here, though. Seriously, man. We park Chopper for the night and go out for burgers downtown. Then we head to Cameron's place, check out his guns, and crack into some southern fire water. It's got the cinnamon, cinnamon bar in there so you get a little bit more taste. So it's not like straight up rubbing alcohol. But the, the way you do it here in the south is you get your jar, you drink it straight out of the jar, and yeah. All right, when in the South, <laughs> you drink apple pie moonshine. Woo! Yeah, there you go, yeah. That kicks. <laughs> we chat for hours trying to plan a route for the next day, but it's not looking good with a massive storm sweeping the country. Thursday. Well, we're not flying anywhere today, so we think we'll go on a little adventure. Camera's got something fun for us planned. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, dude. Take it back home to Cameron, South Carolina. We make our first stop for South Carolina's famous Blue Dogs. Then it's off to the country for some good time Southern fun. Friday. So good morning, we're here at Columbia Airport. As you can see, not great weather, but look look right there, there's a little hole right there. If we could just launch and go through that hole, we would be set. So we got the plane all ready to go, did the pre-flight, and weather's looking a lot better here now. The METAR still says IFR for this field, but it's supposed to update like right now. So if we get good news, we're blasting off and headed for better weather. This app don't update fast enough. So the METAR just updated. We've been waiting on it to update. It was eight minutes past and it updated with IFR again. But look at this. You can see that you can have, look at that. Look, look, look at that, yeah, guys. Right there, like, yeah. oh, I don't want to wait another hour or so. So we just called up the tower on the phone, asked for a special VFR clearance, and they said they got it for us. So we're gonna yes. hop in the aircraft, pick it up on the ground and get out of here. You ready to go? Do it. So we had to stop here in Asheville, North Carolina due to weather. It just was not looking good. We couldn't get up, we couldn't get down, we couldn't get west, we couldn't get east. So we stopped here. We got the crew car yeah, in the man. airport. No questions asked. Look at this thing. We're <laughs> pimping here. We're like a married couple going out for some lunch and hopefully some of this weather is going to burn off. Let's see. Weather finally clears up for us to take off, but not for long. We're up in the air, 20, 30 minutes. The clouds keep coming down. 
the mountains keep coming up to the point where the clouds are covering the mountains and we barely find a pass around. It's bumpy, it's sketchy. Neither of us are having a good time. We finally make it around this little mountain range and that's when a wall of thunderstorms are in front of us. Luckily, we have an alternate airport right in that path. We look at each other and decide we better land this freaking plane right now. The rain starts pouring down just as we come into the runway for landing and we get a little wet. We just had an interesting flight here to, uh, where are we? <laughs> We're in Gatlinburg, yeah. man. We thought, thought we had a little break from the weather, but we had to divert here. Rain, clouds, just getting nasty over the mountains there. So here we are stuck in the rain, but Glad we're on the ground and not in the air right now. <laughs> yeah. It's better to, to be on the ground wishing you were in the air rather than in the air wishing you were on the ground. Ooh, that's true. I was wishing I was on the ground the other night going over to South Carolina. <laughs> yeah. Learn my lesson. This is the best. I mean, I haven't been working here long, but this is the best one that I've seen <laughs> so far. Boom, that's right. Old Chomper. Best looking airplane you've seen. Oh, <laughs> we're parking that's it in tough. here with the Cirruses for the night. If you get the chance, you need to check out this town, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It's a total mountain oasis. Just go do it. Just look at this place. In the line to take the sky bridge here. I told you nobody has cars, they just sky bridge everywhere. Rob and I are flying back to California. We are stranded here in Gatlinburg. We had some bad weather and we are trying to find a place to crash for the night. Is there any way you have a little bit of space for, for uh, two lowly pilots who got stranded? Awesome, awesome. We got it, dude. We got a freaking place to crash. Your, your old boy Cameron Rass, we can the, the, old, the old fast Rass club here, man. We got our connections, man. We make it happen. Cameron is making it happen, making it happen rast. Like, comment, and subscribe. Yes, that's the man. Put it here. Ha <laughs> Dustin. By the way, it's New Year's Eve and we know nobody here except for Sierra from Sacramento. We're going to Puckers. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's my birthday! It's 12! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Saturday. So we had an interesting stay here in Gatlinburg, Tennessee yesterday, to say the least. We really haven't made a lot of progress on this trip due to the weather. It doesn't look great today either, but we we have high hopes. We high are hopes. positive. We're using the law of attraction to bring us good weather. We headed north to try and avoid it. Now we're gonna head back south and hope to get to maybe Dallas today. It's a bumpy ride with 50 knot winds, but these are the clear skies we've seen all week. Cameron's hung over and absolutely hating life in this bumpy cockpit. I'm just glad he doesn't have to Ralph. It's not long before we're back under low clouds doing more scud running. It's all fields here though, so luckily there's a lot of places to land in an emergency. For the first time in my life, I see the Mississippi River, and this time from 2,000 feet. Absolutely epic, but we're absolutely getting our teeth kicked in by the turbulence. The lower we go, the worse the turbulence gets. But we can't go any higher because then we'd be in the clouds. So we're somewhere in Louisiana here. Finally made it past the thick of the storms here. Decently clear skies, we're trying to push for Texas. The headwinds and clouds continue, but now we're seeing more of those pretty colors on the radar scopes. It's thunderstorms and lots of them everywhere. It gets hairy dodging left and right around these storms. We're so lucky to have both flight and the radar scope in the cockpit. Use that information to do our best to get around it. We only get a little bit wet, but we do stay away from nasty, nasty turbulence that thunderstorms can bring. Finally, we make it past this cloud layer into Texas for the most beautiful sunset. I'm thinking finally our problems are over, at least until we come in for landing in El Dorado, Texas. Night is just falling and we're flying across a 50 knot wind to the north towards this runway. On our descent, the airport comes up super fast and we float halfway down the runway. It feels like we'd run off the end, so I punch the throttle and go around. Take two. The wind's battering us all over the place. There's all sorts of alarms going off in the plane, check fuel, altitude, all that. All I can do is focus and hand fly the plane. When we turn base to final though, the winds blew us so far off course, we're way out of line for the runway. We're coming up fast and too high. At this point, I'm asking Cameron, is the wind blowing in the opposite direction of what we thought it was? There's no weather at this airport, so we had to guess. And considering we had a 50 knot headwind at altitude, we didn't even consider looking at the windsock. Take three. This time we extend miles out to really line up for the runway. 
Cameron put his phone away because at this point, the situation is getting pretty serious. If you're on their third attempt for landing, we come down right over the numbers this time with a bumpy touchdown and we're just screaming down the runway so fast. We finally come to a stop just before the end of the runway and take a big deep breath. El Dorado, Texas and uh, came in for a landing at night and it took me three tries just to get <laughs> it down. It was awful. We got it. It was a nasty, no, dude, I'll give you this. The wind was, was terrible. The wind was absolutely terrible. And there's not really much to report here on wind anyway. Yeah. So, oh, so they didn't have a weather report where you, where you read the winds. And it turns out the wind was exactly opposite of what it was doing in the air. So we landed with a fat tailwind <laughs> coming down. It, kept, it was coming up so fast every time, but we got her down safely. There it is. There's a windsock. So we literally came in opposite that direction. We find a Motel 6 to crash for the night and the attendant tells us, people say it's pretty nice for a Motel 6. I don't know what that means, but we are not impressed. Sunday, it's 19 degrees Fahrenheit in El Dorado, Texas. What are we working on here? It's so cold and the gas can't all come off, so I'm trying to warm it up. It really is completely stuck on there. It's frozen on there. Ah! You got it, dude. Yeah, dude. Keep it up. Fingers are... <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I've never been so happy to close the canopy, turn the cabin heat on and slowly defrost in the air. Finally, we get some smooth flying and the consistent headwind has turned into a 50 knot crosswind. So we actually pick up some good speed. We're cruising about 180 miles per hour before we stop at El Paso, Texas to gas up, grab a hot coffee and keep moving. Couldn't ask for a nicer day to fly. And I hate to say it, but all those sketchy flights to get us down south actually paid off. We stopped in Yuma, Arizona for some expensive gas, a quart of oil, and to put the GoPros back on the plane. We land in San Diego where it's 65 degrees and sunny, and we are on top of the world. We made it. Beautiful San Diego. Ah! <laughs> yes, dude, yeah. Glad to be here. Oh, it was great flying the rest of the way. Bad weather sucks, but good weather, beautiful. Now it's time to get Cameron some real taco. These are some of the best tacos in San Diego. Tacos El Gordo, Monday. Cam showed me around South Carolina, so it's time to show him around San Diego. Is there anywhere more iconic to go than La Jolla Cove by skateboard? It seems like forever, but it was just days ago when I was asking myself, what am I doing? Why am I here? Why didn't I just buy something close to home? Cameron and I have been rubbing shoulders in a tiny home-built airplane, dodging thunderstorms, getting stuck in strange places, staying in sketchy motels, landing the wrong way on runways, freezing our butts off in Texas, drinking moonshine and shooting guns. Are we related? Who knows? We never spoke about our relatives, our family trees, our DNA, but we started the week as random Facebook friends and ended it as family for life. There's only three events in a man's life, birth, life, and death. He's not conscious of being born, he dies in pain, and he forgets to live. Did we do everything perfect? No. Was our adrenaline pumping with sheer terror at times? Yeah, absolutely. But this week I can say we truly live. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and do something crazy. You're dying already, so get busy living. Dude, I gotta tell you, this week, I was scared <laughs> as hell about it, but I've had yeah. the absolute time of my life. How about you? Oh my gosh, dude, this has been the greatest, the greatest trip all the way. I mean, who, who, who else can say they can do that? All the way across the country in just a few days. I mean, we had some, some fun times, some scary times in that weather, but man, oh, I had so much fun doing this stuff, man. So much fun. I'll be honest, there were some times there, like uh, with Wednesday, Thursday, we were socked in by weather. I was kind of depressed. I'm like, why did I come out here? I could have paid somebody to fly this airplane out. This is the stupidest thing. Oh no, but, but that's the thing. That's the, whole, that's the whole part of it. The adventure, oh. man, the adventure, the memories we made on that trip. Oh my God, so much fun. And I'm telling you, like I would do that any other day with you, Rob. Thank you so much for watching. This has been an incredible adventure. And don't forget, if you want to rip the best electric skateboards out there chuck them in the back of your airplane your car whatever it is and shred it up to 30 miles per hour use code november2 echo papa that's n2ep for the civilians to save 100 bucks off any board milesboard.com n2ep is the code don't forget to like comment subscribe follow 
Cameron on Instagram at fastrast and myself at rob.rast and we'll see you later. <laughs>